早晨，各位。Members, good morning. We form the quorum. May I call the meeting to order? This is the meeting of the subcommittee on proposals on the method for selecting the chief executive in 2017. The first、uh, thing on the agenda is to、uh, meet with the administration and deputations and individuals. Please invite them to join us now. We are going to receive 126 deputations. And individuals. The meeting will be divided into three sessions. The first from nine to eleven a.m. Second, eleven a.m. to one p.m. And then、uh, we will have a one-hour break. And the afternoon session starts at two until four p.m. So I hope you can all be here on time. Uh, please return to your seat. Good morning. This is the meeting of the subcommittee on proposals on the method for selecting the chief executive in 2017. The purpose of the meeting is to receive views from deputations and individuals on the method for selecting the CE.、Uh, this session will、uh, run until 11. And I will invite you to speak according to、uh, the speaking order. You will each have three minutes.、Uh, the timer uh, uh, will uh,、um, beep uh, when uh, th your time is up, and、uh, please uh, stop by then. And if you have written submissions, we also welcome. Please、uh, pass them to our secretariat. May I remind you? That for members of the public who are here to express their views, their views are not covered by the electoral powers and privileges ordinance, and the same apply to your written submissions. You will not enjoy the、uh, safeguard and exemptions under the ordinance. And when you speak,、uh, please speak near the microphone. We have simultaneous interpretation service、uh, into、uh, English, uh, Kwang, uh, Cantonese, and Putonghua. May I remind deputation and individuals present to、uh, take note of the various security measures contained in the、uh, guidelines、uh, from members of the public attending electrical meetings. And、uh, the guidelines have also been included to our invitation letter sent to you by our secretariat, and is also tabled. Those in the public gallery can、uh, ask the security staff for such guidelines if necessary. When members and、uh, when individuals and deputies have spoken, I will invite、uh, the Under Secretary for Constitutional Affairs and、uh, Mainland Affairs, Mr. Lau Kongwa. And Mr. Cheng, his colleague, to、uh, reply, and、uh, the floor will also be open to members for questions. So we will、uh, play by ears, and I will、uh, bear in mind the、um, 
time we have for this session. Without further ado, let's get started. First, may I give the floor to Mr. Lau Chin Ho. Mr. Stanley Lau, our chairman. Good morning. I am chairman of the Hong Kong Federation of Industries. Uh, on the 22nd of April 2015, the um, administration uh, presented a method for selecting the CE by universal suffrage in 2017. Uh, the federation has already consulted our members. Over 85 percent of uh, the respondents indicated support for the proposals. The public have the view that uh, the uh, proposals are in line with the basic law and also the decision made by NPCSC on the 31st of August is also taken into account uh, public opinions received in the first round of public consultation. The Federation hopes that legislators can have in mind uh, the interests of uh, Hong Kong people and also uh, act according to public opinions. Please uh, support the proposal so that the 5 million eligible voters in Hong Kong can select uh, the CE by one person, one vote in 2017. The Federation has the following views on the um, proposals. First, uh, during the um, recommendation stage, uh, we Note that uh, the threshold is now lowered. Uh, once uh, you have secured uh, the support of 120 um, NC members, that is okay. And uh, a candidate cannot get more than 240 uh, signatures. This uh, will encourage uh, more uh, aspiring uh, candidates to join the race. And during the um, nomination stage or during the committee nomination stage, uh, the um, NC members may nominate two to three C candidates through voting by secret ballots. Each member uh, should support at least two persons seeking nomination, and then um, uh, two to three candidates that get uh, the majority support and uh, with the highest number of votes can join the race. I think this is reasonable, and uh, we can uh, then um, have two to three candidates as suggested by the 831 decision. The Federation is of the view that we should um, get the ball rolling first. Some may think that the proposals are not perfect, but we believe that we should make a start first before uh, democracy can continue to develop in Hong Kong. Some people think that the proposals are inadequate, but if we veto the proposals, that means uh, the next CE will still be returned by the uh, 12,000 uh, EC. This is very conservative, and it contradicts uh, the wish of many people. The Federation believe that after we have universal suffrage for selection of the C in 2017, there would surely be opportunities to improve the method. However, if we mark time and uh, place obstacles for ourselves, this will uh, cause a stalemate in the democratic development of Hong Kong's political system. So we believe uh, we need universal suffrage for the C in 2017. Thank you. Mr. Kwok Chung Man, thank you. First, I'd like to uh, speak to the administration. Now, if you are fierce and bold enough, you should not have hidden agenda. You should say that this is already universal suffrage as set out in Article 45 of the Basic Law so that uh, it can be recorded in the Hazard and then you can be uh, uh, radicaled in the future generations. There are two types of uh, democratic elections. Both uh, can um, ensure universal suffrage. First, in direct elections. Uh, the final representatives are elected through different uh, layers of elections, and the second type is direct election to uh, select the uh, final leader. However, there are common points in these two methods. That is, in each uh, round of elections, uh, the uh, rights are equal. Article 45 of the Basic Law uh, is referring to a mix of these two methods. While I, uh, re I respect the A31 decision, the four sectors are not uh, are just elites. They are the privileged. You ask people to accept them first. I think you have. Oh, 
as some think there is no um, equality in this method. So A31 decision can only arrive at um, popular elections, but not equal elections. Now, if you accept uh, an election that is equal first, then I think it is more acceptable to the uh, public. If you understand that universal suffrage is returning a uh, right to the people, it will be easier. If you have something like that, then uh, you have honored your undertaking and people can return to the normal uh, way of life and then uh, you will be heroes in history. Otherwise, it is just another scam. Now, this if you agree that this is universal suffrage, you agree to it. If it is not really universal suffrage, you just disagree. Whether you agree to it or not, it is a constitutional duty and you should cast your vote according to your conscience. I am in this council here is to urge members to veto the proposals. I still have some time left. Members, have you noted that uh, since uh, the um, addition of uh, another two steps uh, to the um, method, uh, to the process, now it has uh, become uh, another three steps again? Thank you, Mr. Amendu. Thank you. We're at the most critical juncture of um, democratic development. If the proposal passed, then we can uh, <coughs> uh, we can step forward. If, but the Occupy movement has divided the um, community. I urge legislator to support public opinions and uh, accept the proposal so that we can select the CE by universal suffrage. The administration should incorporate views of different sectors <coughs> and take care of the interests of different sectors. And uh, so that we can have universal suffrage according to the basic law and the A31 decision. Some electrical members still insist on vetoing the uh, proposal and prefer to stay put. As to how we can, bring, you know, reinstate the discussion of political reform, uh, and how we can, you know, put forward a proposal that is compatible with the basic law and and our political reality is still questionable. For these uh, members with ulterior motives, I think uh, uh, how can we focus on our political reform and develop our economy with them on, in the way, standing in the way? So I think there should be a rational discussion and a tolerance, especially among the pan democratic camp. They should be able to accommodate different views. When people put forward rational analysis, they have are treated as deviants. I think in a de democracy we need different voices, we need to be tolerant and accommodating. We should be able to dare to speak our mind. The pan-democratic camp is <clears throat> becoming, is acting against public opinion and I think they are going against the spirit of democracy. They talk about democracy but the, the, the behavior is against that principle. Is that really the democracy that we are seeking? If the political reform package could be approved, then eligible voters can choose the C of the choice. If the package were vetoed, then in 2017 the C would still be, you know, elected by the 1,200 members of the election committee. That would still not be universal suffrage. So, by any democratic standard, the five million, uh, you know, uh, voters uh, who return the C E would certainly be much better than a C E returned by just 1,200 members. Of of the election committee. So anyone who knows about democracy should support the package. Next, Ms. Chen Yuk Ngo. Mr. Tam, Mr. Lau, my name is Chen Ngo. I support <coughs> CY Leung, you know, standing for re election. I support the government buying the water tanks uh, to uh, hit against the next round of uh, Occupy Central. And uh, the filibustering is, you know, actually stopping Sir Wai Chen from, uh, you know, setting up the, you know, Innovation and Technology Bureau. So I think we should, you know, you know, you know get rid of all the members who are engaged in filibustering. You're actually, uh, you know, paralyzing the whole government at the expense of the public. I appeal to members of the public to actually get rid of these uh, uh, members of Ledge Code in the next round of election. And I think. Uh, they are so I think the, the, these these people are uh, for example uh, we have at least uh, so in in case of Sun Hong Kai group uh, I think I don't think we should uh, not I think the 
all the so-called inside information is really a joke, and and, and you and we, I think, I think you create the traps. You are framing, uh, Mr. Kok Ping Kwong, and you you are. So so I think Mr. Kwok is innocent. Okay, your time is up. So I denounce those people who advocate independence for Hong Kong and those who illegally occupy uh, Central, creating division within Hong Kong. I strongly support that we should, you know, may, you know, safeguard our national sovereignty. And it's only right that I see you love Hong Kong and the country. Uh, it, so. So. So I think it would be best, of course, for you if the you know system were tailor made according to your desire. I don't think we should challenge the decision of the MPCSC made in August the 31st last year. Uh, so I think it's it's good that we can have, we can pocket this these proposals rather than not. Uh, if it is not to your benefit, you call it a fake uh, universal suffrage. If it's to your advantage, it would be genuine universal suffrage. So I think we should. You insist on going against the interests of people, depriving the five million voters of the right to elect the CE. What you by doing so, I think you stand to become uh, the sinners uh, for all eternity. So all of you are scums, and I think you should, you know, get out of the way so that all five million people can choose their own CEA. Mr. Wang Chen Kun. In history, democracy is not, you know, uh, the product of Asia. Actually, uh, it was actually the result of a long history of development in, in Europe. At the time, when democracy was democracy was developed in other countries because they didn't have the uh, the social conditions uh, in Europe, confusion very often you know arose. Uh, in other countries which try to demo, demo, develop democracy, uh, you know problems could arise very easily. It could become the cancer for the society, uh, adversely affecting the stability of the society. Over the last two hundred years, when some societies developed democracy, we have observed uh, social uh, chaos and uh, military dictatorship after democracy has been developed. After the 1911 revolution in China and the, in Iraq and Egypt. And in Asian countries where they have a, a well-developed system of democracy, normally they have developed the system in a you know progressive manner. Uh, that is, uh, on the one hand, they incorporate the electoral system in the West while maintaining their own social culture and structure. And I think Singapore is a good example. Same as Japan. Japan in Japan, uh, women uh, has. For a long time, had an in, uh, uh, inferior status. You know, a long time after they have de achieved democracy. Same for Singapore. They have a history of 50 to 60 years of democratic election, but they still have a centralized government, and the freedom of opinion uh, is so limited that even a 17-year-old youth cannot freely speak his mind. And therefore, the proposal for the return of the CE. Uh, uh, it's based on the uh, you know electoral system for the, of the last term, and uh, adding to it universal suffrage. I think that should be compatible with the spirit of you know uh, orderly progress. Mr. Lai Ming Cha, Chairman, I have a dream that one day our country will really uh, be strong, and I think these are in dispute. There are some truths which are indisputable. That is, all of us are born equal. All people in Hong Kong have the same dream, uh, that we have this dream to go after democracy. The choice before us now is whether the people of Hong Kong should accept, you know, this, uh, you know, uh, you know, propo proposal for a uh, fake universal suffrage and accept this proposal that will limit our civil liberties. Some people say this is progress, but if you if you want to simply become you know, a voting machine, then I have nothing to say. But some people say that there is democracy in Singapore. I'm really shocked. And they're not the majority. The government always confusing public, you know, putting forward these proposals of you know, how the candidates may actually, you know, <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, enter the gate, 
come to the MP election. So most importantly, is what choice do you offer the the voters? The package proposed by the government is made under the MPCAC decision made in August 31st uh, last year, and we all know what kind of candidates will be offered to us. And the nominating committee can easily be controlled by the central government. And in the end, the voters will only be offered, you know, three equally bad choices. We always say that the MPC uh, is a rubber stamp. The delegates only know how to, uh, you know, clap their hands and press the button. Should we accept our fate and uh, um, uh, and simply choose one among the three rotten oranges uh, as our CE? Uh, it's true that we are hungry. We've been hungry for universal suffrage for 30 years. But despite our hunger, uh, would we, you know, you know, choose one of the three rotten oranges that would, that, uh, and if we, if we eat them, it would upset our summer. So how would we make our choice? How would we, uh, as parents and grandparents, uh, choose? We want to, you know, decide on what we want to eat. We we don't want charity, uh, because the equal right to to nominate and be nominated and the cast votes are natural born rights. And this is what we mean by uh, genuine universal suffrage. We are all born with the equal rights, and uh, and uh, and uh, you know our political right is not charity. We don't have to beg for mercy from the CPG. We have to stand on our hind legs and fight for what for our rights. So I think therefore we should stand united and vote against this package which will actually, you know, uh, means which actually means a step in a reverse direction. We have to really uh, you know you know, you know, uh, fight back for uh, the for the rights uh, which are ours in the first place. Uh, the first lesson uh, when in Chinese when we start uh, attending university was Nanako by Leung Kai Chiu. That is uh, so uh, the article talked about six kinds of uh, bystanders, and and the author, I think, I think the the political reform package now, uh, you know, proposes a one man one vote system. So what fundamental change is there? With such a we have such a system because in Hong Kong we have some bystanders who uh, don't know what is right or wrong. They will always be willing to put down a signature and so on, but they've never. Consider why we are in this dire straits now. Why we have these people? We have people coming forward to occupy central. Yesterday there was a volunteer who asked me to put down my signature to support political reform. I asked him what what was the meaning of political reform. He couldn't even answer my question. Some people would use different justifications. Some people would say. Uh, they refuse to care about social issues. In Jungano, we have traffic congestion every day. So in 2017, even in 2017, you know, no, no, the problem will not be fixed. After the uh, handover, the government is only concerned about, you know, you know, you know, being loyal to the CPG and how can they focus their attention on issues affecting public livelihood? Do we want the same team to govern Hong Kong? Mrs. Carrie Lam uh, uh, and I had a three-minute dialogue in Hang Hao, Chiang Kuan O, and uh, she pointed out that for three million, three point five million voters, only three percent. Can only take part in the election of the nomination committee, and the nomination committee only make up 0.01 percent of the population of Hong Kong. And these are people who will determine the three candidates who will, you know, come forward as in the C as C as candidates in the C election. Hong Kong is a home. I dare to challenge you all. Would you be prepared to make the sacrifices, especially the 230,000 people, young people, and those from the pro-government camp? Are you willing to give up your special privileges so that you can give back to the people of Hong Kong a fair uh, election? So, are you willing to, you know, longer be a bystander? One man, one vote is not er everything. We still need the right to nominate and be nominated if there is democracy. But it, uh, I think it's like shopping in a, in a market. I, if you make a sacrifice today, Hong Kong is doomed. And 
if the forthcoming election in the forthcoming election there are three uh, candidates, Wang Yanda, Helena Wong, and Raymond Wong, how would you make your choice? I believe you should understand what the Democratic camp is worried about, Mr. Liu Sun, Chairman. The SAR government. Uh, According to Article 31 of the Chinese Constitution, you know, uh, formulated the Basic Law of Hong Kong. Basic Law is the foundation of the laws of Hong Kong, and it uh, represents our core values. And the package for legal reform is based on the Basic Law, and this package has to be approved by two thirds of legal members, and that is also a requirement in the Basic Law. The opposition camp is, you know making use of this uh, provision in the basic law and by just having 20 odd votes they can veto this package uh, although uh, uh, package giving the people of Hong Kong the right to choose the CE by universal suffrage is really ridiculous that they can use the basic law to veto that in historically we've never had democracy in Hong Kong in the UK, the, the UK when they rule, when they were the ru ruling Hong Kong they never gave the people of Hong Kong democracy on the other hand, if you use housing as an analogy, it's like the people who have never lived in uh, a proper room. Uh, we've only had democracy since the handover. And only after the handover uh, did the people of Hong Kong start to have rooms to live in. And the basic law provides the right to the people of Hong Kong to choose their own CE. It's like the CPG giving a big apartment for the people of Hong Kong. But there are some who still complain that the, the room, the apartment is not big enough or not westernized enough and say this is not a, a room. After all, it's not an apartment. And and they keep asking that they want to fight for a genuine, you know, flat or room. But if we ask them for a blueprint, they 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 cannot deliver. They just object for the sake of objection. They would rather sleep on the street rather than move into this uh, flat. Of course, we can't force them to do so. However, the small number of people who choose to sleep on the street are forcing everybody else in Hong Kong to sleep on the street with them. For most of the people and members who want to live in that uh, uh, room uh, and most people who want to you know you know make a start in the development of democracy by re choosing CE by universal suffrage in 2017 but these people still uh, you know insist on the way so that all of us in Hong Kong uh, the rest of us will, will lose that opportunity so in the past we only talk about two systems, we seldom talk about one country. But Hong Kong has never been a country, we are only just a small city in the whole of China and all along we have been relying on China for the supply of our food and water and the reliance has even deepened since the handover. In 2003 when the economy was in decline, the CPG launched the individual traveler scheme to save our economy. So there's a close link between us and the mainland and we are very reliant on, on China. Mr. Chung Kong Singh, thank you. Regarding the package to enhance the election for the for the C in 2017, I'm sure that uh, when the package is proposed, the candidates will uh, uh, will certainly enhance the system, and the public will also have uh, have ideas as to how we can enhance the system. So leave it to the the, the voters, and I, I don't think the pan Democrats should stand in the way. They say that if there is genuine election, uh, uh, they will win. They always say that they have more votes than the pro government camp. But if the Democratic Party put forward an, uh, a candidate, will the civil party support you? Well, I think members of the public will know that you're not united among yourselves. So what after the veto is uh, the package is vetoed, the pan democratic camp said that the government will <clears throat> put the blame on them. But I think this is irresponsible on the part of the pan Democrats. Uh, uh, in what has the pan democratic camps done in the last 10 years? What political leaders have they trained? All the uh, councils that they have, you know, uh, put forward uh, do not have the caliber as Raymond Wong, like Gary Fan. He is causing, uh, you know, nuisance at the district council. Uh, Feng Wai Gong is being kicked out of the party. And then. Uh, Regarding the nurturing of candidates for the C election, they have failed to, you know, nurture a single potential candidate.
who has the strength and the caliber which can really you know win the support of the voter so that The pan-democratic camp has, you know, failed to do that. They don't have the ability or the determination to nurture political talents. In the district council election this year, if they fail to get 50, 50 seats, I'm sure Emily Lau will, will resign. If we veto the package for the election, then if they lose three seats, that's still fine, but still, the Democratic camp chairman will have to resign, and I hope that Mr. Sin Chung Kai would really, uh, you know, not let down the political part, the Democratic Party, and the former leader Si uh, Uh We have great, you know, expectations of Ronnie Tong. We hope he will support political reform so that he can really help. You know, I hope that uh, he would become the whip of his party and work together with the pro-government camp so that we can move into a new era in our history. And Mr. Dennis Kwok, if I think if the civic parties don't stand united, then you'll always be the, the vice chairman and in the next term, two of your, your councils will be gone. So I think Dennis Kwok should vote for uh, in support of the uh, Package for political reform, and if he stands for direct election, uh, he will certainly win in the forthcoming election. Mr. Chiko Quinn. Thank you. Until March 2013, uh, there are 193 countries, uh, uh, according to the UN, and amongst them, how many of these countries have a have general uni universal suffrage, like what we are insisting? On so since universal suffrage is not so you know common, why are we being so harsh in Hong Kong? In any election system, there is no guarantee as to who will be nominated or elected. We don't have a, a political party ordinance. The pan democratic camps can put forward candidates uh, in in the individual capacities as candidates. Same for the pro government camp. So I don't think there's any discrimination against any candidates, and I think this is also an improvement. Whether the package is uh, approved or not, I believe that we need all to work together for our economic development. Instead of you know, you know, fighting among ourselves, why don't we take a step back and think about how we can help the economy of Hong Kong develop better? Uh, I believe only by the pandemic camp and the pro-government camp working together, uh, you know, and stand united, only then can our economy develop further, and that we can you know <clears throat> recover the economic. Prosperity that we had before 1997. Mr. Yim Shin Ming, um, this year is a crucial year for political reform in Hong Kong. After almost two years of consultation, um, the, the, uh, the government um, submitted a detailed proposal earlier, and uh, having consulted the trade widely as of yesterday, most of our members are in favor of the government's proposal on universal suffrage. Um, as one of the main chambers in Hong Kong, we are of the opinion that the political reform of Hong Kong must fit our current situation, and the method of selecting the CE must comply with the basic law and the MPCSC decision. Some people think that the current proposal is not ideal, and as such, they would not accept it, and they would not take it on board first. Otherwise, they would be stuck forever. Um, we don't agree with such view. Um, for any policy or changes in um, system, um, it, it takes time, and um, we have to go through a process. Um, in the past, only 1,200 members were involved in the election, but by 2017, 5 million eligible voters will be able to take part, and finally, the people of Hong Kong can take part in the voting. Um, we think that this is a big improvement in political reform. Some people say that the government's proposal are not up to international standards, and um, the rights of elect and being e elected uh, are compromised. But when we look at Article 26 of the Basic Law, 
um, all permanent residents of Hong Kong SAR uh, can uh, have the right to vote and be voted upon, and we cannot ignore the international standard. Hong Kong doesn't have a political party law, uh, but according to Article 45 of the Basic Law, the chief executive um, is chosen by a broadly representative nominating committee. So um, accusations that it does not comply with international standards is not reasonable. In the p past year or so, political reform has become um, a popular topic in our society, and um, the coming June, the Legislative Council will vote on the proposal, and the democratic development of Hong Kong hinges on the votes of our legislators. We hope that um, the legislators can approve the, the political reform proposal um, with a reasonable um, mentality. We have to go forward. We cannot um, be stuck forever. Next. Ms. Elizabeth Chair, Chairman, Members, since the government announced proposal on political reform, they have tried to lobby for support from the legislators, especially the Pan Democrats, and they promised some amendments. Um, but at, uh, as of now, we have not seen any suggestions from the Pan Democrats, and um, they even um, threaten to s surround the Legislative Council later, and which would um, hinder the operation of our council. And um, having heard such threats, I can tell that the Pan Democrats are facing greater and greater pressure. And um, some Pan Democrats think that if they um, take the proposal on board, they would be stuck forever, but. If the proposal is rejected, um, there there is no um, schedule for future improvements. So um, why would they think that they would be stuck with the arrangement forever? Would they prefer uh, 1,200 people to make the decision, or do they prefer all of Hong Kong to make a decision? And um, we are already halfway through our lives, but our future generation is coming. I hope that they won't complain about the decisions we make for them. Our legislative councillors are lawmakers, and um, when um, legislation is concerned, we have to draw up a framework. Um, for members who oppose to, who oppose to the August 31st decision, they. Um, would not accept the framework set by um, MPCSC. The uh, proposal is already much more open than many people imagine. Um, if the uh, Pan Democrats really think about the welfare of of the people, if they um, if they um, want to be a nominee, they would stand a chance to be nominated. Um, to become a ch the chief executive of Hong Kong, the candidate must consider um, several things. We are in full support of Ms. Carrie, L Carrie Lam, the chief secretary. We are um, thankful for the work of the government. And um, the government is um, saying that um, 2017, we have to make it happen, but it really does happen. Hong Kong will be jeopardized. Um, this is a um, a very small group of nominating um, committee members, and um, according to Chairman C, um, as as long as we have universal suffrage, there's no need to improve it. And um, um, in 1980. Seven, um, the uh, uh, reform was promised, but yet it didn't happen. But um, even though the um, um, the reforms did not materialize, at least we saw um, an effort from the central government. But right now, um, all the um, all the proposals have been re rejected, and um, 
and the uh, selection committee has all the power and um, the uh, they are ignoring the needs of Hong Kong people um, they are only um, shelling out slogans but they try they are trying to ignore the fact that the um, the nominees would be screened we are not foolish um you know if you are given a bowl of uncooked rice you would not eat it right we would not be deceived if this political reform f proposal is so ideal um see why learn would try to take all the credit why um is he hiding behind Carrie Lam? C. Y. Lang, are you still a man? So it's it's no wonder that your your daughter is um, trying to get away from your family. Um, so, um, Mister Six Eight Nine, if you have the guts, you have to ask Chairman C to give us real universal suffrage. Um, we sh and um, even if when all the uh, nominees are. Um, not ideal you would still do, you still have the right not to appoint that person if you don't even um have the guts to to do it um w i'm i will just tell you that we would not accept it i um request the um i think we can we should put the uh 217 proposal to bed um, I'd like to share my feelings on some of the, the things the deputations have said today. Um, first of all, we have a nominating committee. Um, according to the basic law, it's the nominating body for C nominees, and it's broadly representative, and it can um, realize Ben's participation. And um, and um, half of the uh, um, a, a, a nominee must obtain the votes of half of the members from the committee um, but I feel that we should not only have 1200 members having um, considered the orderly and gradual manner um, of political reform um, we feel it's acceptable at the moment but um, during the next term election um, the number of members should be extended to 1600 and uh, we feel that there should not be too many nominees um, there should be a maximum of three candidates and um, we support the government's proposal of having two or three candidates, and uh, we propose a two-round voting system. Um, the two high, uh, the two candidates with the highest number of votes can enter the next round, so that um, we can um, and um, th there should be focused discussions on uh, key issues in our society. Um, we don't completely um, agree with the government's proposal. We should uh, further evaluation should be done after implementation. To wrap up, we feel that the government's proposal um, um, f fits with the interests of the majority of Hong Kong, and it's a milestone in our democratic development. And hopefully, um, it will be passed in Lesco. Um, but we of the opinion that the proposal is rather conservative so um hopefully the uh the the next term administration of hong kong would conduct an evaluation to further refine hong kong's political um reform system and um some deputations um mentioned a worsening of um hong kong's economy i recommend to um read a book called Why Nations Fail, written by a Harvard professor. Um, the book introduced different uh, political systems in over the world. There are three main reasons for decline. Um, first is a lack of central authority. It's very um, common among African tribes, and it's common in poor countries. And um, and the second is a um, de deprived um, economic system. If we rank the economy of Hong Kong, it would be among the freest economies internationally. Um, it's, we, we, there's certainly room for improvement. Your time's up. Mr. Kong Kwa Ping. Thank you, Chairman. I live and grow up in Hong Kong. 
I think the government's um, political reform proposal um, is um, rather excellent when compared with other countries. Um, the MPCSC decision um, complies with the situation in Hong Kong, and um, it, it meets the needs of the majority in Hong Kong. It's um, pragmatic and practicable. By 2017, if we have universal suffrage of the chief executive, um, it would be a new milestone for democratic development in Hong Kong. Um, during the colonial days, the governors and the chief executives were all appointed by London, and um, they never consulted the views of Hong Kong people, let alone having elections. And uh, after the handover, the central government implemented one country, two systems, and Hong Kong people ruling Hong Kong. And um, the democratic element has um, increased year by year. And um, eventually, um, the goal is to have universal suffrage. And um, Hong Kong's political reforms are hinged upon the basic law and the relevant decisions. Um, dem democracy is not taken for granted, and it's not granted by others. And um, it's authorized. Um, it, it's it's given by um, the central authorities to Hong Kong, and um, the universal suffrage of the chief executive of Hong Kong is a local election of, of sorts, and this election must comply with the decision of the central government. We are at a pivotal moment in history. We hope all the politicians and authorities would um, would respect the views of the majority. If we fail to have universal suffrage by 2017, then um, a lot of um, uh, there will be a lot of negative impacts on Hong Kong, and it's catastrophic. Finally, I'd like to remind the so-called um, Democrats that real democracy is not about um, it's not about you know being the loudest, but um, holding the views of the majority. Mr. Chen Shui On, I think um, we have to comply with the basic law and the one country, two systems belief, as well as the MPCSC decision. And um, the, the SAR government has done their part, and now the focus on political reform is on the Legislative Council, especially the opposition camp. Whether or not they are hero or culprit, it um, really hinges on this battle. Um, this Hong Kong government has no power to make the final decision. It must obtain two-thirds of the support from the Legislative Council as well as authorization from the central government. The hardest part is the third step. Um, at Lechco, and um, according to the 31st August decision by the MPCSC, um, a blue plan has been drawn up, and um, it has um, garnered some um, majority support from Hong Kong. I hope the Pan Democrats can um, do something good for Hong Kong and um, and um, go back on their decision. And um, strictly speaking, political reform in Hong Kong is not a local matter. Um, but an issue which must be um, tackled with the central authority. I've lived in Hong Kong for decades, and um, before Chris Patton's times, I've never, I've not even heard of the words universal suffrage. I hope this political reform proposal can comply with the 31st August framework, and I hope that the nomination formula can help the um, mildly pan de mild de pan democrats or mild pan um, pro establishment camp to become nominees. And um, we can kick out the um, extremists, so that we don't have to suffer from um, movements like Occupy Central anymore, which are detrimental to our economy and lives. And um, I hope we can see some smiles in the people of Hong Kong again. Mr. Leung Ka Wai, thank you, Chairman. Um, the uh, government's reform proposal will be voted in Lechco in June. And um, a lot of pan Democrats say that they would not take it on board first, or else they would be stuck forever. I don't agree with such view. Um, everything has its procedures and steps. If you want to implement something, you must take the first step. Um, 
you know, it just if you need water, you would turn on the tap. If you want to watch a show, you would turn on the TV. You cannot ignore the order. You cannot um, get water unless you turn on the tap. Um, you know, taking it on birth first is merely the first step towards chief executive, um, the, the universal suffrage of chief executive. No one told us that um, by taking on board first, we'd be stuck forever. And the Pan Democrats um, um, always accused the nominating committee of being um, being manipulated by, by the central government. Um, but when you look at certain sectors like education, um, law, and um, and and welfare, there are a lot of representatives from the Pan Democrats. And um, a secret, since um, a, a secret ballot system would be adopted, anyone would um, would be able to elect and be elected, and um, and all capable pan Democrats can stand a chance. And um, there are no restrictions on the um, um, the method of election, and there is much room for discussion. So why? Are we setting barriers for ourselves even before the first stage? We are clearly on the road to universal suffrage, and um, we must first obtain two thirds of the support from the Legislative Council. And um, as such, the government, as well as of Hong Kong, can make an important first step. If we don't take that step, then we will be, we will only be um, talking about universal suffrage forever, and um, we will be stuck. I think most Hong Kong people look forward to universal suffrage of the CE by 2017. I hope the legislators don't um, use the people of Hong Kong as a political tool, and um, I hope that you would support the proposal. Mr. Wai Tech Lun, I have some views on the um, Method of selecting the CE by universal suffrage in 2017. Um, the most heated discussions are about the um, um, makeup of the nominating committee, and um, I think we should have a maximum of 1,600 people, or even or, or 14, 1,400, or we can also keep and change at 1,200 members. Um, it should be um, broadly representative and um, widely accepted. They should have the right to nominate. And whether or not we have universal suffrage of the chief executive, I guess most Hong Kong people would prefer that we have universal suffrage. And um, they hope that after we have universal suffrage, their lives can be um, improved. And I hope the Pan Democrats can support the proposal come this June. Next, uh, Mr. Cheng Chong Kwong. Thank you. Uh, Hong Kong people have been uh, talk about universal suffrage for selecting the sea. I think this is the common wish of the majority of the people in Hong Kong. Any democratic development cannot be achieved overnight. Uh, from uh, 1,200 uh, strong easy uh, to uh, 1,200 uh, member NC and universal suffrage. This is for sure a progress. All pan Democrats and pro establishment members should show their, their responsibility in history. Most of the public are in support of the proposal so that we can achieve a um, historical milestone. This is genuine universal suffrage. So long, we must. Make a step forward before we can talk about the uh, the package and then improve it in the light of actual circumstances. I commonly, I frequently uh, heard about um, universal uh, international standards. This is interesting. We are part of China. Hong Kong is our home. I once read a book. 
were just a review of what happened during the Occupy movement and also the harms done to Hong Kong. Two young people uh, was uh, rather agitated when they spoke just now. I'd like to ask them, when we were a colony, were they born yet? Did they know, or do they know, whether there were elections back then? The governor uh, was appointed by the UK. How come no legislators here have mentioned this? Were they deaf? No. I am asking whether you are lawmakers in Hong Kong. All right, you are aware of that scenario. How come you did not speak up now? We have the chance to vote. Why don't you explain to members of the public? You have to give an account of why you are acting in this manner and for what reason. Please, no direct dialogue. All right. So uh, why why are there legislators opposing the proposals? I think because they uh, have phobia for universal suffrage. Because uh, after the C can be uh, selected by universal suffrage, LegCo will also be fully returned by universal suffrage, and they are worried that they will lose their seats. Thank you. Now. Uh, there's a famous story. This is a man uh, and called Tapato, meaning um, just so and so. Uh, his mom asked him to buy uh, white sugar, and he bought a brown sugar. He was scolded by his mom. He said, "Well, the two are just the same." And then uh, once he had to catch a tra train, he was two minutes late, and the train had already left. And he said to himself, "Well, I was only two minutes late. Was uh, I think it doesn't make a difference if the train uh, could be delayed by two minutes." And once he was sick, and uh, instead of a uh, proper. Uh, Doctor for a man, uh, the uh, his family got a vet to treat him, and so he died. So we can see his tragic fate. If we are asked by the government to be like him and uh, to uh, accept the uh, proposals for the time being, then our fate is also doomed. Now, uh, Hong Kong police uh, catch the wrong suspects. They don't mind. We don't have a uh, co-location of uh, clearance uh, for XRL. You can uh, construct it first. Uh, even if the rain shelter is useless, uh, you can use it for the time being. What if I pay you with fate bank notes for your salary? But once you've accepted the fake ban notes, so you were deemed uh, to have been paid. Are you willing to accept that? So, rooting rights is not just the same as universal suffrage. Even if you uh, call it genuine universal, general universal suffrage for a million of times, it won't be genuine. The um, elections are high threshold, and you will be cheated for eternity. The nominating committee will have all the say as to who can uh, join the race. Theoretically, or on service, um, the people have a say, but in fact, it is the central authorities and the business sector who uh, control the elections. The last generation uh, fled from communist rule to Hong Kong. If we choose to uh, kowtow now, then we uh, can we will fate we will, we will cannot be we cannot be answerable to our next generations we strongly oppose the proposals here and any system with screening hong kong's aspiration for democracy is very simple we want the right to be voted to be nominated and uh, to uh, be elected thank you i think the uh, opposition camp uh, has always uh, said that uh, once we've accepted the proposals, there can be no improvement afterwards. But there is no rationale behind that. Anything uh, can uh, be improved gradually. Or perhaps they always think that uh, things will not be changed uh, because they do not trust the Beijing government or the CCP as um, someone uh, 
born and grew up in Hong Kong. Well, uh, before the handover, uh, it might be understandable if I had such uh, queries, but it's been uh, 17 years after the handover. You can see how supportive the central authorities have been to Hong Kong. When we had difficulties, they help us. When we want more IVS, uh, they expand it. Uh, when uh, we think we cannot cope, they reduce the number. Uh, the uh, Beijing authorities have been very effective, and we can see the high economic growth in the mainland, and uh, billions of uh, people have seen their life improved. The, Brit the Chinese government may be regarded as one of the best governments in the world. I y have yet to see another government that can achieve so much within so short period of time. It's not because we are now part of China, and that um, and I have any self-interest involved, but. If we do not trust uh, our central authorities, well, uh, which have uh, a proven track record, then why should a sovereign state uh, not support as uh, uh, one of its cities? I think such worries are unjustified. You may say that economically, yes, there is growth, but there are other areas to catch up. But this is normal. You have to do it gradually. Uh, once you are sufficiently fed, then uh, you can um, improve uh, your dignity and other things. We can expect things to continue to improve on the mainland. We may think that we are a developed place, but please don't forget that we are still developing. We still have to learn. Hong Kong is Hong Kong as developed as we think. Please do not be prejudiced. If the proposals can uh, be passed, it will mean a major improvement for both Hong Kong as well as China in terms of democratic development. Whether we are a legislator or a member of the public, we can continue to monitor the government. Why don't we do it on a better platform? With a better system, we can monitor the government, we can advance, and uh, the system can uh, be improved in the future. This is not a b out of mercy from an other power. But uh, if we monitor the government, this is uh, naturally going to happen. Thank you. Uh, the current proposals are approved by the MPCSC in the light of the actual circumstances in Hong Kong and also under the principle of gradual and orderly progress. It is also under Article 45 of the Basic Law. The C will uh, be, um, I mean, the candidates will be nominated by a broadly representative nominating committee. I'm a member of uh, the election committee. I was involved in the 2012 elections. For the CE, my family and most of my friends and most Hong Kong people uh, were never a party to the process. So there will be five million eligible voters, and they can each cast a vote to choose their right their CE. I'm sure it will be more democratic than the uh, select. I mean uh, the um, the election committee process, and this is also something promise to them under the basic law. People of different sectors will be able to run. They can um, use their uh, political platforms uh, to secure the support of the NC to become candidates. It is baffling to say that with screening, there is no genuine universal suffrage. Well, even in Western democracies, they also have screening. And uh, you, we want the future sea to be patriotic and love Hong Kong, and you call it an obstacle. But can uh, leaders of um, foreign governments not love their country? We must first have universal suffrage for uh, selecting the sea, and then LegCo can be returned by universal suffrage. I agree that there can be uh, room for improvement, but even if we veto the proposals, we will only mark time, and we won't advance democracy. Why can we not just make the first step? It's been uh, 17 years after the handover. Very soon I'll be able to uh, get the um, elderly card. I hope that in my time I can see universal suffrage. I urge 
legislators uh, set aside their differences and seek common grounds and um, pass the proposals uh, in, for the general interests of Hong Kong so that we can have universal suffrage and we could uh, elect our seat by uh, one person, one vote. Thank you. Mr. Yuan Tong. Thank you. I uh, recognize everyone in Hong Kong I would like to secure democracy. This is our broad direction, and we must all advance towards that goal. I believe all the members of the public would like to see economic development so that we can uh, all be affluent. Uh, this is uh, part of our aspirations, and therefore we must also move towards this goal. The SAL government has got proposals for us. I believe it is just as one step of uh, democratic development. It's just one of the steps and not the final one, although it is important. It will be an important step towards democracy. We should set aside our arguments, and it's time to act. Uh, to act is more meaningful than to argue. And uh, the nominating procedures are just part of the election process. We can continue uh, to negotiate, but we cannot uh, stop here. As an ordinary member of the public, I really want to uh, elect the CE on a one-person, one-vote basis because that would mean one step forward towards democracy. And let's not forget that economic development is just as important as democracy we must set aside our differences, pass uh, the proposals, and uh, less uh, focus on economic development. Thank you, Ms. Lam Kin Ho, Ms. Sylvia Lam. We strongly support the proposals that is based on the Basic Law and also the A31 decision by the MPCSC. The proposals is in the interest of uh, China as well as Hong Kong, and it's in line with the one country, two system principle. It is um, uh, tailor made for uh, the actual circumstances of Hong Kong, and I think uh, please speak uh, closer to the microphone. The nominative procedures are fair and uh, just. The NC is something uh, provided for in Article 45 of the Basic Law. The uh, 1,200 members will be from four sectors, and they are a miniature of society. Compared to uh, uh, 1,200 uh, EC, this is a major improvement. When we have one person, one vote uh, as a start, then we can continue to improve our package. If uh, we mark time, then uh, there can be no universal suffrage for uh, the uh, LC election in 2020. So you can consider the serious political, economic, and democratic impact. Uh, recently, there is something on the YouTube asking us what we want in life. Now, in Hong Kong, we want the rule of law. Uh, we have uh, the uh, decision by MPCSC made on the 31st of August. We want the uh, pan Democrats to um, put aside their um, uh, wishful thinking and uh, please uh, make a graceful turnaround and support the proposals so that the 500 eligible voters in Hong Kong can select the seat by one person, one vote. There is no need to worry that you cannot join the race. Uh, you should not uh, query. Well, uh, politics is all about decision. This is a critical moment of political development. Uh, you should consider the pros and cons and make the right decisions. I think we should have the long-term interests of Hong Kong in mind. Now, uh, I'm sure the wise can make the right decision. May I once again appeal to all legislators uh, to pass the proposals which is in line with the wish of the community so that we can have universal suffrage in 2012. We hope that we can uh, have a more progressive democratic political system afterwards. Thank you. Mr. Mshisham. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, uh, Hong Kong is just a um, region, and the central authorities is the central authorities. 
I think uh, there is a clash of uh, two ideas. Uh, one is a constitutional system designed uh, by the central authorities, and the other, a so called um, a system so so called in line with international standards. The Hong Kong SL government is under the PLC, and the government is subject to the regulations of the Chinese constitution and the basic law. One country to system is a legacy of history and how socialism and capitalism can coexist under uh, a cap how can a capitalistic uh, SAR coexist with a socialist state uh, the principles already laid down in the basic law when I attended past discussions in this council I said that under the basic law uh, there uh, already uh, the Balanced principles is just that in the process of discussion, uh, there was no special emphasis on balance. One important idea under the universal suffrage uh, for selecting the seat is for Hong Kong people to cast their votes and for appointment by the uh, central authorities. So we need both uh, votes, those from Hong Kong and those from central authorities. Both are indispensable. Of course, uh, the uh, vote uh, to be cast by the central authorities is their right to appoint, their appointment right. Um, deputations talk about the right to be elected and to elect and to be nominated. Well, there are similar provisions in the basic law. It's just that we have different interpretations of the articles. But please consider this. Hong Kong is a capitalist society. Under the framework of uh, the A31 decision and the basic law, how can uh, we have a democracy in Hong Kong? We should not consider out of context. We must consider it under the framework of the basic law before the system can be sustainable and uh, can uh, be uh, feasible. Political uh, any political system cannot be achieved overnight. I hope that the proposals can be passed at this time, and then uh, th for the next term we can improve it. We've always heard that uh, there is a process to everything, and room uh, was not built in one day. And uh, even you want to walk a um, thousand miles, you have to start with your first step, Mister. Michael Mack, I represent uh, the Civic Radio. First, I want all those who support genuine universal suffrage to uh, listen to this. If such proposals for 2017 can be accepted by LegCo, we are doomed. Genuine universal suffrage must uh, be equal and universal. There must be an effective um, civic nominating right and a voters' right to uh, take part in elections and to vote. However, the stupid decision by NPCSC on the 31st of August has cheated everyone <coughs> that Hong Kong has universal suffrage. It has brutally interfered with the genuine democratic elections in Hong Kong. The basic law talked about the principles of a high degree of, eco of autonomy <coughs> is entirely squashed, quashed, and it has not considered the fact that over half of the population support the Democrats in logical elections. Unfortunately, uh, because of uh, the uh, current mechanism, their weight in this council is less than a half. The CPG and the SARG has never considered the fact that more than one million people took part in the Occupy Central movement. It is a form of civic disobedience, and it's they were clearly fighting for the right for civic nomination and genuine universal suffrage and not a fake universal suffrage. The CPG is now offering us uh, the so-called universal suffrage. It's even worse than arranged marriage. In a, an arranged marriage, there would be a matchmaker, you know, to go between the parents on both sides. Uh, and ensure that there is a good match. 
and parents from both sides can have the right to uh, to refuse or object. But the decisions made on August 31st by the MCSC never gave the people of Hong Kong the basic political right, namely the right for of uh, uh, you know civic nomination. Uh, CBG is worried that the uh, not that the the candidates nominated by the people of Hong Kong do not love Hong Kong or. The, our country, and that is unwarranted. It's a very, it's simply a pretext they use to, uh, to, 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 so the, uh, the, uh, those who support democracy will, be, will not become uh, candidates. So we also have to bear in mind whether or not that there will be, you know, the danger of, uh, uh, you know, uh, bribery. Finally, I like to. Uh, say this to the pan Democrats that there must be at least twenty four of you who would object to the proposed package Mr. Fong why Chi many people are you know you know uh you know fighting for so called universal suffrage if if it's not if, if the demand is refused and they will say this is scam democracy and they go into a temper tantrum. They, they ask. They don't. They've ignored the fact that the proposed uh, uh, method well, uh, for for the election we see in 2017 is a major improvement compared with the past. Under the rule of the uh, British colonial government, we didn't even have universal suffrage. So the present package, proposed package, is a lot more democratic. But they prefer to stay put and drag other people's feet along the way, and they even want to tie the hands of other people and not. Uh, allow the train of democracy to move forward. Actually, the present proposed package has been, uh, you know, the subject of detailed deliberation uh, under the framework of the basic law. It has gone through. It is a result of a lot of coordination. Uh, it reflected the uh, the central government's right uh, to to uh, the government Hong Kong and also uh, the aspiration of people Hong Kong for universal suffrage, and the results of many polls have indicated more than half of the people of Hong Kong uh, accept this proposed package for the election of C. We all want to pocket the package first. So for people who are responsible to, to Hong Kong, including the voters and the, the electoral members, should actually face the reality and you know, you know, uh, and be forward-looking, rather than go into a temper tantrum. Uh, you may not agree with my analogy. You may argue we're not kids, but we're all, you know, members of the same family. We are all Chinese. We should actually stand on the same front. We should, you know, recognize our own country uh, and government, and we should take that first step first, so that. Our, so that we can further, you know, enhance our political system while at the same time, you know, improving our economy. I really hope that we are not kids. We are not kids and involved in a temper tantrum. We should really, you know, work for the interests of the people of Hong Kong and therefore support the uh, endorsement of the present uh, proposed package for universal suffrage, rather than you know engaging in temper tantrums and. I think the long term long term interest of the people of Hong Kong. Next, Mr. Chen Wing Hong. The basic law uh, was promulgated on the fourth of April, nineteen ninety four, uh, giving the people of Hong Kong eventually the right to elect a CE by one man by one man one vote system. Over the last twenty five years, the people of Hong Kong have been looking forward to to this day. Uh, today, there's only a year or so left before we will be able to elect our CE by one man one vote if Letcho approves the package. Even though the present proposed package is, is not uh, uh, satisfactory to everyone, but we cannot deny that you know moving from a system where 1,200 people choose our CE to 500 uh, to the giving uh, leaving it to the five million people to de to decide is an improvement. There can never be a perfect system. If members think that the system is not perfect enough, then going forward they should enhance the system. But that doesn't mean that we should reject it now. 
It doesn't mean that we should deprive the people of Hong Kong the right to elect their own CE. We should approve the package so that people will be able to choose the CE by a one man one vote system, so, and then we can enhance the system, uh, you know, uh, as we learn from experience. Honorable members, the people of Hong Kong have waited for 25 years already. Uh, they waited since they were young. Now they're in the middle age. Uh, those who are middle age uh, have now become senior citizens. For those senior citizens, it may be the only chance for them uh, to be able to choose our own CE. If the package were rejected today, can you tell the people how lo much longer they have to wait? Can you guarantee that the senior citizens will have the right or have the opportunity to elect our own CE? How can you, you know, <laughs> you know, account for that to the people of Hong Kong? As you know, uh, you know. I think we should be, you know, bear in mind the overall interests of Hong Kong. At this historic moment, it is now the time for to show the people of Hong Kong that you are impartial, that you are bearing the interests of the people of Hong Kong at heart, and 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 it is your duty and the right attitude for you to actually cast a vote according to the uh, preference of the people of Hong Kong. So I'd like to therefore uh, appeal to all the electrical members to really cast your vote in support of the proposed package so that everyone in Hong Kong will be able to choose our own CE by a one man, according to the one man, one vote system. Uh, Mr. Che King Singh, Chairman, I support the government's proposal uh, to uh, to for the election of the CE in 2017. Uh, it's been 16 months already since the consultation started. Uh, during <clears throat> this period, I participated in a lot of the cons consultative activities, and uh, a lot of valuable proposals have been put forward during the consultation and incorporated in the report. The report has responded to many areas of concern. For example, the composition of the nomination committee remaining the same, recommendation by members and nomination by members of the nomination committee, and the uh, candidate getting the highest number of votes will be returned. All these factors have already been outlined in the report. The report has actually, you know, uh, you know, uh, collected the combined wisdom of the people of Hong Kong, and they deserve to be supported. Over the past period, we have gone through an unnecessary period of turmoil. A small number of people has spoiled the economic development of Hong Kong, and the good hard work done by generations of people of Hong Kong had all, was almost spoiled. The opposition camp claimed they didn't want any screening for the C election, and because of that, many people have misunderstood that the decision of NPC uh, SC made on August 31st is actually letting down the gates. Uh, and well, election in a in the election, we want to choose the right candidate, and setting you know reasonable conditions and requirements are necessary in any election. As we, as in the case when we go for a job interview, there are job requirements for the job, and I believe that the Pan Democratic camp and and members, uh, electrical members from that camp, when you you know employ your own staff, you would also have such requirements. You may have first, second, or third interview for the right candidates. So you can imagine. An election without any requirements will be so chaotic. The so-called screening is actually an unfounded accusation. Uh, the target of attack is, is focused on screening. Next time they can claim that the uh, the 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 uh, you know you know voting rate was very low and therefore uh, that they will continue to attack our system of universal suffrage and continue to hurt the rights of the people of Hong Kong to, to nominate the CEA. We've migrated from ancient times to the modern times. For the first time in Hong Kong, we're going to have universal suffrage. Uh, there are thousands of volunteers in hundreds, thousands of booths working hard to promote the, the development of our political system. One can see that this is the aspiration of the people of Hong Kong. So please, uh, honorable members, put aside your personal interests and please support the implementation of the propo uh, proposal for political reform uh, by putting aside our own selfish interests. Mr. Wong Chin Hung. 
First of all, I'd like to thank all the honourable members, government officials, members of committees, and everyone in our community for working so hard, so that in 2017 all of us will have this chance to, you know, achieve universal suffrage and elect our own CE by one man, one vote. And offering one um, another option among the many different forms of uh, electoral systems, so that Hong Kong can continue to play an active role. Uh, regarding the government's, uh, uh, you know, report on the consultation. Uh, uh, regarding the arrangements for the universal service of CEA, uh, uh, the, it is proposed that all voters will uh, choose CEA by one man one vote system, and the candidate getting the uh, majority of la largest number of votes will be returned as CEA. And this is a simple system uh, that is uh, compatible with the aspirations of the people of Hong Kong. Since the handover, the people of Hong Kong have worked hard. And now, in 2017, we would be able to elect to see by one man, one by one man, one vote system. This is not a God-given opportunity. It is the result of the efforts of many people. I sincerely hope that the proposed package will be, uh, you know, accepted so that Hong Kong will continue to really, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, maintain its uh, uh, good. Uh, position in the international community. Uh, Chairman, I have the following views regarding the proposal. First of all, regarding the composition of the nomination committee, the nomination committee, I agree with the proposal. The original proposal for the 1,200 members of the uh, you know uh, uh, nomination committee and uh, uh, who are returned from the four sectors and 38 subsectors, and regarding the arrangement for election. Uh, uh, that is, there should be one round of uh, uh, voting for all, by all the uh, voters, and the candidate uh, who obtained the highest number of votes will become the CE. And I think this is very efficient. Secondly, regarding the nominees committee's procedure to nominate the CE on recommendation, like any candidate who gets uh, 120 recommendations. Uh, then the nomination committee will make a committee nomination to nominate the candidate to be a candidate for the C election. And uh, we are also capping the number of uh, uh, recommendations to 240. Uh, according to the system, there should be at least four, uh, minimum five, and a maximum of ten candidates to contest the election. And there will be sufficient choices for the nomination committee. Next, Mr. Loy Yokai. Uh, the Human Rights Monitor would like let co members to veto the fake universal suffrage, which in essence is uh, screening. Uh, universal suffrage is a reflection of the universal human rights. It is a God given uh, right. Uh, uh, which everyone is entitled to. Of course, it would be best that the existing laws can protect that, and if not, then we will f we should fight for it. If there are these, you know, uh, uh, unacceptable laws, then we should accept them. The International Human Rights Organization already confirmed that we have this, you know, this uh, uh, basic human right. The IPPCR point out that everyone has a right to participate in politics through election. All of us have the right and the and the opportunity to cast our votes and and be elected in an election, and that includes the, the, the right to make nomination and be nominated. And and we have to satisfy each and every one of these standards, including the fact that the, the requirement of the election must be fair, equal, there shouldn't be discrimination, there shouldn't be any unreasonable restrictions so that the people can freely express their, 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 their views and minds so that eventually we can return, elect a government that can reflect public opinion. In the election itself, if the election cannot truly reflect public opinion, then the most crucial meaning of an election is denied. That is, we cannot really, you know, form a genuinely democratic government. But I like, must point out that the CPG really supports election, except that they want to know, pre, be able to predict the outcome before the election takes place. The decision made on August the 31st by the MPCC is telling us that the CPG, after putting forth this proposal, they want to know the outcome of the election beforehand, because this is an election that could be rigged and manipulated to ensure that the preference of the CPG will be freely expressed. And the candidate return, in the end, 
will not have any mandate because its mandate comes from uh, Beijing. Well, the voter, but then the voters have cast the votes to, to, to choose this candidate. So the central government is, manip by manipulating the number of candidates being offered for election, then it can control the outcome. And so the crucial point is, is in the screening. And the flaw of the 8 August 31st decision is that the CBG can screen out the, the candidate, uh, uh, screen the candidates so that even though we have universal suffrage in name, we don't have universal suffrage in essence. What are, uh, so why, 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 of course the CBG wants to hide this, uh, embarrassing fact, but then, uh, uh, it wants to actually, you know, give legitimacy to the system that it wants to, you know, uh, impose on us. So I, therefore, there's so much more reasons why we should reject the proposal. Next, Mr. Fong Tak Hui, Chairman. I have the following comments regarding the packet proposal by the government. I think the package for political reform is constitutional. Because in Hong Kong, we go by the rule of law, and any proposal must be compatible with the law. And this proposal is reasonable, acceptable, and is, and is compatible with the actual circumstances of Hong Kong. Although the nomination procedure according to this proposal uh, for, uh, is problematic in our opinion, and it's not perfect, I hope after this package is approved, we can sit down and further enhance the nomination procedure. We all know that in a, the development of any democratic system throughout the world was not achieved overnight, uh, that we have to do things in an orderly and progressive manner. It's like 1,200 the 1,200 members of the uh, election committee which uh, elected our CE. And the five million eligible voters, uh, and for them to uh, choose our CE. I think by comparison, we, we we're getting a major improvement. The decision of the NPCSC on August 31st last year, we all know, cannot be changed. And I hope that those uh, people who are fighting for democracy have to face the reality. You have very noble aspirations, which we respect. But I hope you will also listen to the uh, views of the majority and do not put your noble aspirations and interests above those of the, res the, the, the 7 million people of Hong Kong. I believe that be it the pan democrat members or members from the pro-government camp, they have to shoulder this historic responsibility. I truly hope that they will listen to the, uh, the majority of the people of Hong Kong and support the proposal so that our political system can take a major step forward, a historical step forward. And we shouldn't, just because of our noble, uh, you know, uh, aspirations, uh, you know, ruin or spoil uh, uh, the development of our economy and our political system. If the proposal were uh, rejected, I believe uh, democracy will come to a standstill for Hong Kong and we will never know when we're going to have universal suffrage. Finally, I hope members who really support the proposed package. Thank you. Mr. Fan Lapin. Um, we are very disappointed with the government's um, political reform proposals and uh, we reject the proposal, in fact. And um, we are disappointed as uh, at the government's performance during the consultation stage. It's, it's merely trying to confuse us and it's dodging the real problem, which is um, um, the presence of screening in the universal suffrage. How do we um, build a fair and open um, voting system? Some deputations said that the current proposal is already democratic enough 
um, but I don't think you have done much research. And uh, for the four main sectors in the uh, 201 to um, e election, um, their um, um, their percentages are rather skewed, and only 20 percent of Hong Kong's population is represented, and only 20 percent can take part in the elections. And um, for example, one sector might have just 28,000 people, and um, and um, the second sector might have more than 200 people, and one sector only has 700, and so on and so forth. So um, these figures are very imbalanced, and um, a proposal under this premises is certainly not broadly representative. The government is dodging this issue, and um, they are always saying that we can talk about um, these um, things later, but for the pan Democrats, these are key issues we have to tackle. Um, we don't understand why the government um, says that we can uh, discuss these after the proposal is passed. So uh, hopefully, before the proposal is passed, the government can clarify these issues for us. The government should not deceive us. We have experienced 30 years of democracy and um, in the local elections we all went through a nomination process um, during the electrical elections and district uh, elections and um, the, the uh, nomination threshold is only about um, 10. So the key difference is that we have two separate sets of rules and um, the government never addressed why there is a need for a nominating committee. So there is a need of communication on the government's part, and it's trying to deceive us. We have to communicate to narrow down our um, differences, but the government is trying to widen those differences instead of reaching a conclusion. So um, my worry is that the district council elections will be affected eventually. Mr. Chen Chi Heng. Um, good morning, Chairman. I'm a secondary school teacher, and um, I'm very concerned about the impacts of our political reform on our students. Um, when I came to um, the, the complex this morning, I saw that it, it's surrounded by tents, and um, by June we might see a repeat of Occupy Central if we still have so many tents. And um, in the past two months, um, a lot of government officials have um, visited the community and they were targeted. They were targeted by the public and um, they could hardly talk with the public. And um, in the uh, appointment of the Vice Chancellor of Baptist University, some students um, tried to stop the appointment by um, crashing the VC's office. And so um, there, we we can already see the repercussions of Occupy Central. And um, if the university professors and lecturers continue to um, um, to um, uh, encourage students to um, um, run violent protests, then they would have to pay the price eventually. And on political reform. Um, I am 30 years old already, um, and it's time for me to get married. And um, and uh, in ch in China, we uh, couples have to follow their parents' orders, and uh, if they other otherwise, there would be a lot of um, disputes and arguments, and um, the husband would be the one who suffers. So uh, by the same token, for our future chief executive, um, if there are conflicts with the central government, the people of Hong Kong would suffer. Um, the um, nom nominating committee um, w is trying to help Hong Kong people find the right candidate. And if the proposal is um, vetoed by the pan-democrats, then uh, 
they are standing in the way. I think the the reason for rejecting the proposal is clear. It's so that they can um, they can continue to um, um, s speak out their slogans every day for um, and fighting for real universal suffrage. Finally, I have some words for the people of Hong Kong. If you want to get a wife, if you only go for pretty girls, you can never get a wife, and you will be single forever. Ho <laughs> Mr. Ting Kong Ho, the Pan Democrats always talk about fake universal suffrage. I think you are mistaken. Um, as far as universal suffrage is concerned, there is no um, fake or real. It must comply with MPCSC. If you use, uh, if you pay using a fake bank notes, they would not. Um, you you will not get what you want, and you would accuse those products of being fake. And um, according to Miss Carrie Lam, the implementation of Universal suffrage of CE in 2017 would allow the entire um, Hong Kong to um, choose their leader through one person, one vote. So this is a rather democratic solution. Um, when you think about the uh, election in 2012, which was um, which only involved 1,200 people, which is the better plan? Most pe most Hong Kong people have high hopes for universal suffrage by 2017. So hopefully the Pan Democrats would not stand in the way um, of Hong Kong's democratic development. The Pan Democrats accuse um, the election of C.Y. Leung as a um, game behind closed doors. And um, some they also accuse the um, functional constituencies of being um, small circle elections. But um, come to a one seven, we have a proposal which allows five million voters in Hong Kong to have a say. So why are you rejecting the proposal? They would rather um, our development to come to a standstill, and um, they uh, they are only sticking with their slogans, and they are deceiving the public. Is this a sign of democracy? I hope um, the Pan Democrats here can listen up. You are deceiving the five million voters. If you feel that the proposal is not real, you should um, you should give us your your proposal instead of rejecting. Our proposal. Our five million eligible voters have very clear intentions, and that is, they want universal suffrage of the sea by 2017. So please stop deceiving them. And when you think about the democratic development of Hong Kong, the public has made it very clear. Well, over half of them feel that we should have universal suffrage of CE by 2017. Mr. Chong Wai Chang, Chairman, Deputations, I'm uh, from the uh, Hong Kong um, Zhangzi Association. I'm very happy to be here today. I'm sure you all have different political views, but I hope um, you can just take a moment and reflect on the situation. I'm the 37th speaker. I saw that 29 deputations are in support of the proposal, and only eight deputations and some young deputations are against it. They are rather um, inexperienced. So, in other words, 79 percent of the deputations are in favor of this proposal. I hope you can <coughs> take note of that. You should not just um, stand against it for the sake of it. Please remember, it's easy to destroy, but um, <clears throat> difficult to build. Why are we destroying Hong Kong? I'm a homegrown um, Hong Kong person, and I support the one person, one vote system. 
and um, Hong Kong must develop, uh, must conduct political reforms according its, to its own situation, and this also complies with the basic law. And it's a fair and open process. Everyone can stand a chance of being elected. As long as you have the capability, you should not just accuse um, the uh, um, of of being restricted by the system. We have five million voters, so it's a it's a great improvement from the twelve hundred strong election from last time. The um, um, the, the MPCSC's decision is set in stone. So I hope you all um, face the reality. And um, after the pro after um, the uh, proposal is passed, we can further refine it. We should embrace the Lion Rock spirit. There is certainly room for refinement even after the proposal is passed. I think um, you should all think about it. And under the current political climate, there is a lot of internal turmoil. I hope we won't fight against each other. And uh, to quote a famous um, classic saying, we are all from the same root and we should not fight against each other. I hope we should not we should put our extreme thoughts and root words aside and come to a consensus. It's not your time to speak, please be quiet. It's his time to speak. Next Mr Tong Hok Leung. Thank you, Chairman. One person, one vote is the collective wish of Hong Kong people. Um, the, cur the current political reform pr proposal represents a big step for democracy in Hong Kong. I don't see any reason to stand against it. The 217 proposal allows Hong Kong voters to choose our leader by one person, one vote, and um, it has um, reflected um, balanced participation, and it also shows um, the, the the downfalls of um, extreme proposals. And the nomination threshold is very low, and um, five or ten persons can stand a chance of being nominated. And um, a secret ballot system would be used during the nom during the um, nomination phase, and so um, different people stand a chance of being nominated. So. Uh, um, the proposal is already very accommodating, and uh, I'm sure that pan Democrats stand a chance of um, becoming a nominee. So um, you cannot accuse the system of otherwise. I think under the system, we can choose a chief executive that is acceptable by both Hong Kong and the central government, and um, that's why we should support it. And uh, please remember that this is not the ultimate proposal or, or solution. Hong Kong can continue to refine the system according to our needs and conditions. If the political reform proposal um, is negated, um, it would be Hong Kong would take a big hit, and um, everyone will be losers. So I hereby urge all legislators to set aside your personal views and um, take the courage to accept it. You should not be too occupied by extreme political thoughts, and instead you should um, think about the welfare of all of Hong Kong and um, support this proposal. Mr. Yang Chi Wai. And um, it's, it's a very um, heated debate here today. And um, after the second round public consultation, as, as well as the, uh, the framework of the basic law and MPCSC decision, the consultation has been wrapped up. And uh, we are going to have four sectors and 12 
hundred members in the nominating committee. All these have not changed, and these are based on the MPCSC decision. And um, we can see that the government has tried their best in consulting um, the public and the um, nominating threshold for um, CE nominees have been lowered as well. And um, people who obtain 120 votes from the nominee committee can stand a chance of becoming the nominee and the upper limit is 240 members. So in other words, 5 to 10 persons can uh, stand a chance of being nominated and at the end a maximum of three nominees can be um, chosen. And um, finally we can choose the CE um, using one person, one vote. And um, the proposal um, is compatible with the majority view of Hong Kong and um, it also complies with MPCSC decision as well as the views of different sectors of our society. And um, we should um, implement universal suffrage of the CE by 2017. And this is the pragmatic and correct decision. And it also represents the majority of Hong Kong. And universal suffrage um, complies with the NPCSC's decision as well as the central government's wishes. And it's also something the Hong Kong public is looking forward to and we should relish the chance. I'm a voter um, of the um, accounting constituency and I hope that um, the legislators would listen to the trade and vote on behalf of the people they represent. They should not only vote for themselves. And um, the proposal must obtain two thirds of support from the Legislative Council before it's passed. Um, if the parties and politicians only think about themselves, Hong Kong's democratic development would suffer. So I hope they um, take this chance to reconsider their views. Um, this session will finish at 11 since we have um, the next batch of deputations in the next session. Um, some members have questions, but um, unfortunately we won't have any time for that. I hope um, I want to invite Mr. Lau Kong Wa, the Under Secretary, to respond to the deputations. Please be concise. First of all, I'd like to thank all the deputations for. I don't think we need him to respond. I. I think our the members' responses are more important than his reply. Do you really want to lis listen to the gibberish from the administration? Um, I've already made a decision, Mr. We will have even more deputations in the next two sessions, and we won't have any members for us to speak. I'm very unsatisfied with your arrangement. You should extend the meeting or hold another session so that. Um, the members can uh, can communicate with the administration. We have no time to respond. We are going to have even more people for the second, third session. So what's the point of us being here? It's not about yourself, but we have a lot of deputations today. Um, the deputations are all here today. Um, we have very few. Um, Absences, so um, please let's not waste any more time, Mr. Lau Kong Wa. Please, Chairman. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the deputations, a lot of the deputations, for supporting our proposal. Um, it's reasonable and acceptable. Some deputations have um, expressed their wish for the proposal to be passed. And um, some deputations mentioned that this is a valuable chance for all of us, and um, they hope to be um, involved in the voting as well. And they don't want to see Hong Kong coming to a standstill. Yeah, um. And some deputations uh, pointed out that this is the uh, critical time of our reform, and the responsibility rests with the legislature. We hope that our lawmakers have heard the uh, wish of uh, the people and support the proposals. Thank you. Uh,
The time for this session is up. Thank you very much for your presence and、uh, express your views to us. So、uh, we end this session, and the next will start immediately.